Hello and welcome to Web Application Performance 201. This is a video presentation of metrics for Foglet users and implementers to help them understand web application performance better. Let's go ahead and get started with a brief demonstration of what a web page and what a hit is. So if we look at this browser, you can see that I have this page rendered. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some of the details on this page because that's basically what we're framing these objects for in the context of Foglight. We're really looking at what metrics we can gather about this page to look at the performance. So if you look at the page, the overall page is the complete rendering and those that page in order to do the complete rendering you have this top level hit and you'll see the first one up here. That's act, This is actually a hit but it's the frame for the page and then all of the other subsequent hits on this page I believe there's about 150 of them. They come from all the different places to make up the page and each of these is called an individual hit. So at the low, lowest level the hit is actually the, the web request. Okay so let's go back to our presentation now and we'll have a look at some of the details that we gather in Foglight on these pages and, and the hits. So if we look specifically at the page timing metrics that are captured by Foglight we have two sets. We have information captured at the browser uh, using a sniffer and also captured na by navigation timing and this is by instrumentation that we insert into the page. So captured at the browser we're going to get the end-to-end -end time, the processing time, and the network time and we'll break those out so basically you try split the page performance into how long it takes. And then on navigation timing we get much more information about all of the other events that happen inside the browser. So if you look up until this point the the, uh, the TCP time, these are all things that happen before the request actually gets sent out of the browser. And then the request starts and you get information back. So we'll have a look at all of these different sections of navigation timing as we go through the explanation. Okay, so this is a little bit of review from the first section. So when you have a page, what happens is all these connections are set up. And we saw a little bit of that in our demo. And you can you can set up connections to the origin server and it's not that unusual to have maybe 20 TCP connections going to the origin server just to serve a single page and then you'll have third-party connections to add servers and acceleration servers so what we're really looking to do is to measure the time from 1 to 4 the end-to-end -end time for this page and what you see in the sniffer is you don't see the timing of the third-party components but you do see the timing of all the things that come back to origin but what I really see is I see the one, I'm looking for the one to four time. That's really what we're looking for, the end to end time. And we're also looking for the two, two to three time, which gives me how long did it spent in the back end. And then um, we also want the one to two and three to four, which gives us our client time. So basically the, the one to two is the trip there, and the three to four is the delivery of, for the trip back. And what we really see is two and three, so we have to estimate the other pieces, the one and two and three to four, by looking at acknowledgement packets. Okay, and that's that's a good review of our, our first lesson. So if you want more details on this, you can go back to the 101 video. So let's have a quick look at these sniffer page timing metrics um, in our demonstration. So if we go back to Foglight, and you'll log into Foglight, and I'm, I'm just going to do a quick hit search. I'm going to do a simple search for the last minute and I'm going to pull up um, I'm going to pull up just a specific filter I have that only calls back pages it doesn't call back hits so pages in the, in the context of Foglight pages are a type of what we call special hits and that means that they, they, they have both hit timings and page timings on them so if you look over to the right here you'll see end-to-end -end time and back-end time this is the actual time of the hit itself so if you're looking at this time back in our waterfall um, that page, that hit time is only this time right here for the home US page. Okay, so, so this right here is not our page time. <clears throat> in order to see our page time in Foglight, you have to drill down on the hit detail view. Is one way to get to it. And you can see this in a new window. And then what you'll see on the right hand side here is that there's, there's page details. And that's the page details right here. And you'll see what they get on here is they get the end-to-end -end time is 1.7 seconds. Here, this is only 649 milliseconds, the end, end time on the hit. And we'll have a look at that later. So, And then you could see the, um, the client time. And you can also see the back-end time. 
So all of those three times that we're looking at before in our diagram really break out here. Uh, another way to see this is if you go into the replay view, and I'll show you that really quick. So if you go into the replay view on one of these pages, and you look at, at the page level, um, you'll, you'll see that same type of information. So here's the entire page, and if I cursor over the page, you'll see that the end-to-end -end time, six, four, 649 milliseconds, that's, the, again, the time of the hit. It's not the time of the page and the same with the client time of 46 milliseconds. But the same thing if you go here and you go to hit details and then you look at client and timings you'll be able to scroll down here and you'll be able to see the timings of the hit and then this is the page times that we saw before. Okay so you have, when we see page load details that's basically what we're looking for and that's giving us the sniffer timing details. Alright so let's go back now to our presentation and that's the end of basically the sniffer timing metrics. The next thing we want to look at is the navigation timing and this is a W3 stand, W3C standards project. W3C sets most of the standards for the internet and basically what they've done is they've created an API where you can get all of this information out of most of the popular browsers. So this is, a, this is basically a thing that the browser itself has to support. So most mobile phone browsers and most of the um, the regular uh, web browsers support this today. So basically what you have is a navigation start and then there's some redirect actions that happen if the page gets redirected somewhere. After that it's going to look for content inside the cache that's on your browser. It's going to do the DNS lookup time for anything else it didn't find in the cache. And then also after the DNS it's going to start setting up TCP connections now that it has the DNS entry. After that your request is going to start because it has everything it needed set up. Once the request starts, you're going to unload. This unload happens and that's basically getting rid of the previous page. So if this is your first page in your browser, you won't have an unload event. It'll basically be zero. But after you unload that, your response starts rendering inside of your browser. Uh, and then what happens is we're going to load this, uh, the content. So this is actually when we're processing it processing it inside the browser and then the initial the last thing that's going to happen is the load event and this is actually when you're going to bring up the information inside the page and then when the load events done when it actually renders the page you're finished okay so what we've done in foglet is we've used this standard and all of these timings that I, I uh, that I represent here these are all available inside foglight so two of the big times we look at are the page completion time which represents my end-to-end -end time in terms of the navigation timing standard and the content delivery time and this is basically where the response is happening. So these most accurately reflect the same thing that we pick up in the sniffer called end-to-end -end time and back-end processing time. So all of these other times are all net new that people can really use to do an analysis on all the things that set up in the browser and these quite often can cause problems that aren't reflected in the application uh, and not at the fault of the application either. Okay, so the, the next part of this, let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of these hits so that we can see what they look like. So again, if we go on a page and we bring up the, the page details, and I can hit this by hitting the I, or like we saw before, once you're in a session, you can get that information. And as you scroll down the bottom, you'll see there's a specific navigation timing details piece. And again, this is only available at the page, not at the hit. So here you'll see the page completion time, and that's our big one, is 628 milliseconds. And our page processing time is 521 milliseconds. So what's nice about this is you can compare it up here to the sniffer time. And usually these are pretty close if everything comes back to origin, but a lot of times the navigation timing information, and we'll talk about some use cases in the next section, we'll, we'll give you de detailed information to say third parties are causing problems. Okay, so that gives you a quick peek at the navigation timing, and you should take some time to become experts on this. It can really be useful in, in diagnostic situations. And the last thing we just want to look at it is a hit. Now a hit is a very simple representation of a page. So for each hit, what we're looking for is the end-to-end -end time, and we get the same thing. We see when the hit goes in and when it comes out of the sniffer, and what we see, these, we see the two and the three. So we estimate the one to two and the three to four by looking at the acknowledgement packets. 
there is no hit information from instrumentation available today however there is a standards committee currently looking at that and that project the, the one we have now is the navigation timing standards that's the navigation timing API there's a new one called the resource timing API and that will actually eventually be able to give you hit information on every page using the instrumentation that concludes our demonstration today thank you very much for attending